Ephesians 4, verse 11. The Apostle Paul writes, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ." Really, tonight, that's what we celebrate, is God is accomplishing that here at Countryside, and we're so grateful for that. In a moment, we're going to watch a video together that our own Andrew Hale has put together that just encapsulates sort of a year in the life of Countryside. And as we watch that, I just encourage you to rejoice, as, as I will be, at what God has done for us, and He's been so good to us, and it's so fun to look back over the year. But let's begin with a word of prayer, and then we will watch the video together. Lord God, we are so grateful this evening, and we acknowledge your wisdom in redeeming a people for yourself, and then calling us to unite ourselves together as a body you call the church, and then to meet week in and week out so that we could use the gift that you've given us for the edification of your body, that we might be built up as we serve you through serving one another, as the word is taught, as people are discipled. And we thank you that we see that happening here at Countryside. And as we look at the, the video and remember all the things that you've accomplished in and through us this year, God, we just want to say thank you. We're grateful, and all the glory goes to your name. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Let's enjoy the video together. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. step away from our study of Romans for the summer, and we want to look at some truths that are very important, truths to which we must hold fast. And if we fail to do so, we will find ourselves in great peril, both as individual believers and as a church. And But we have been uh, walking through the words and works of Jesus. So we know, first of all, that every single one of these signs that is recorded, like the rest of the book of John, it is so that if anyone is an unbeliever, they would read these things, be convicted of their sin, repent, and place their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But the people that you think are the worst sinners in all the world, tax collectors and prostitutes, they did repent, and so they're getting into the kingdom of heaven, and you're not. You can imagine how that went over. Many believed in his name. They, they believed in him because of the signs. Again, this is a superficial belief. And it says Jesus was not believing in them, essentially. Well, if you've been coming here in recent weeks, you know that we're going through what we've called our Anchored Series. And it's, it's a really a multi-year course that will be dealing with uh, both systematic theology and, and elements of biblical theology. 
in this first section that will take us into the new year. Uh, we're dealing with the topic of bibliology. Because your sins have been forgiven you for his name's sake.
I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. began here on our campus a distance location for the Master's Seminary. And this last week was uh, really the first week of the normal classes, and I just wanted to mention that to you. That has begun. If you want to see sort of where they meet, you can go down to our uh, north building, and there are a couple of rooms there that are set up for the seminary and for them to learn and to uh, study. We're grateful for, for that opportunity. Writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning.
one concept that I think is oftentimes left entirely out of this cultural discussion of masculinity, even biblical masculinity, is what we're talking about this morning, of, of friendship. So, so how do I deal with these situations involving technology that aren't stated specifically in the Word of God because the Word of God is written long before these things were ever invented? Few words, I think, have the ability to spark more excitement when you get a group of Christians together than the words Calvinism and Arminianism. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God.
Ministry of Hope House International to provide adequate housing for three or more orphans to be adopted into a Ukrainian Christian family so that they could be raised in their own country. You also generously gave to this ministry $120,000 in that one Sunday's offering. These 25 children are no longer orphans. They are now sons and daughters. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. When God calls you to a ministry post, you should expect to feel inadequate. You should expect that. Don't think that exempts you from doing the job God's called you to do. Let's chisel this into the cornerstone of our Christian conscience. Every Christian is expected to serve. 
only you. There's not another believer sitting in this room that shines the grace of God out in exactly the same way as any other believer sitting in this room. I hope that you're interested in church growth. Jesus is interested in church growth. If you like your church just the way it is, then you're not interested in what Jesus is interested in. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew, for putting that together. I tell you, in light of uh, just reflect on everything the Lord has done in our church, it's only appropriate that we would take a moment to pray a word of thanksgiving to him. So let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for the incredible blessings that you've showered upon us both individually and corporately as a church. Above all, Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son, that you loved us enough to send him to die for us in our place. Lord, we also want to praise you today and thank you for the amazing gifts that you've given our church. And above all of them, Lord, after that of uh, your son himself is the people of our church. Lord, you've given us people who love you and who love one another and who demonstrate that love on a daily basis. Lord, you've given us people who are generous uh, with their finances, Lord, and have given faithfully and sacrificially to this church. Lord, you've brought new people to us, people who drive in many cases for long distances to hear your words preached from this very pulpit. Lord, we thank you that those who come here are listening to your word because they love you and because they want to hear the true words of faith and of life. 
They don't come here, Lord, to have their ears tickled, but instead, Lord, to grow in godliness. Lord, we have many people uh, this year who have suffered greatly, uh, many who've had serious medical illnesses, many who've gone through many other trials of various types. And yet, Lord, uh, by and large, through all of that, they have demonstrated great faithfulness and love towards you. Lord, their example through suffering of graciousness and thankfulness and patience has been an inspiration to all of us. Lord, I thank you that you have empowered this church to hold fast to the word of God. You have resisted uh, any hint of doctrinal drift in our midst. And Lord, we praise you for that. And Lord, I also thank you for each person here and their willingness to serve. Lord, these people have given their lives to the devotion to you and have served one another faithfully and tirelessly. Father, as we conclude this, I just want to thank you again uh, for your gifts. I want to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done this past year, and we look forward to this next year. Lord, I just pray that by your grace, you would make us faithful to continue the work that you've set out for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, good evening. Good evening. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And you know, the Lord God has supplied all of our needs for all of the ministries that you just saw in all the, uh, the uh, video right here, and uh, also our facilities, uh, which has uh, been really amazing. I'm going to give you a short uh, financial review, and for those of you who have additional questions, you can see me afterwards, all right? Our fiscal year begins in October, and so we're three months into our fiscal year. And you can see that uh, our general fund budget was about 1.1 million, and that, yet the Lord provided 1. Point, almost $2 million uh, to date right now. Now, we expect to be a little over at this point due to the end of the year uh, giving, which is usually a little higher. Uh, but this year, it was abundantly higher. And so we're very thankful for that. Uh, and then our expenditures, um, our budget was uh, 900000 and we were under budget uh, for as far as what uh, the people spent. So that uh, is a good deal as well. Here's a, a history of our giving since 2004-2005. Uh, and you can see that uh, it's increased uh, with our um, uh, attendance as well. And so, in fact, it's actually done a little bit better than our attendance uh, for the uh, many years there. So uh, that's uh, terrific. And this is the fund balances. Um, we began the year uh, with about 434000 in the general fund. Uh, now, that's, that's our reserve. Uh, we want that to be somewhere around 600000 when we finish the building. So... That extra giving helps us uh, reach that as well. Um, and then uh, the building fund had 641000 benevolence almost 100000 At the end of uh, December, the general fund was at $1.5 uh, million. Uh, and uh, that's for ministry, but uh, because of the extra amount that's there, it help us, helps us to fund some of the other projects that we have that are related to the new building such as what we do in this uh, building, um, and also uh, remodeling of some of the office space, uh, which are some of the projects that we've got uh, coming. So uh, the building fund is at 271. Uh, the way we're working things is we have a limit of 8.5 million in our loan, and uh, so far we have uh, borrowed 2.5 million. And so as we finish the building, that will increase but our hope, and looks like we're going to be able to uh, borrow less money than we anticipated. And so that's also good as well, because we want to get that loan paid off uh, as soon as we can. And then our benevolence is sitting at 81000 and that's used for the needs of uh, the people that uh, are in our congregation, and also some that are outside of our congregation as well. 
Now, I've shown you this, but there's also some additional giving. You saw Hope House for 125000 Actually, I think it was my, a little bit more than that. Yeah. And so um, you can see that uh, the Lord has been gracious through uh, your faithfulness, and I want to thank you for that. I also want to mention uh, the people that, uh, a couple of people that work so hard behind the scenes, uh, Jeff Scarborough, our uh, administrator, uh, helps us with all of that and does a great job with the office personnel. And then our finance committee that is headed by Gary Dunlap, and he's been an, uh, just a wonderful resource for us as well. So much to be thankful for. And the Lord has provided so that we can do all the ministries that we do and we can have all the facilities. So uh, praise the Lord for uh, all your faithfulness. Well, did you get all those numbers? I'm a numbers guy. I can tell you they were very good. Very good. It's remarkable what the Lord's doing in this church. It's, it's, I mean, just the videos are getting longer. And uh, the, there's, the amount of ministry going on is increasing. Uh, the amount of people that are being exposed to the Word of God is increasing. Uh, we're seeing, you know, people equipped for works of the service in great numbers, and we're seeing those who the Lord choose to save come to saving faith. And, um, you know, what better work could be done in this church? So let's go to the Lord and thank him for uh, what he's done and pray for his continued blessing on this church. Father, we are, we're in awe. We stand back and see what a great God you are. What great works you do. What a joy and a privilege it is to be able to participate in these things that bring glory to you. Father, I pray for your continued grace and blessing on this church. Lord, I pray that you continue to bring unity in doctrine, unity in the fellowship, unity in practice. It's so precious to be a part of a church where there's unity as a result of like-minded people seeking to serve you, Lord, seeking to exalt Jesus Christ in our, all of our activities. Everything that we do, Lord, is centered on bringing glory to you and exalting your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would continue to sustain this church, provide the uh, abilities that need to be here in order to teach your word, Lord, in order to uh, facilitate the fellowship that we have, Father, in order to bring about uh, all the activities and the ministries that go on in this church. Father, we don't want to presume on you in any way, but Lord, we are so thankful for what you've done, and we pray that we would be able to continue uh, serving you in these ways. Father, I pray that you continue to bless our missionaries in the field. Many of them are in very turbulent places, very violent places. And Father, we pray that you would continue to uh, work through them, that your word might be brought to people that have no other opportunity. We pray that you would protect them, that they might be able to serve you and preach your word in places where it's hostile against Christianity. Lord, I pray you uh, continue to bless the finances in this church as it allows us to uh, have more people come to worship you and and uh, cooperate together in service. Father, I pray as our new building opens, Lord, you'd help us to be good stewards of uh, the more people that come. Be good stewards of all the children that you see, uh, Father, in, in, in this church. Help us to bring the word to them at a young age that they might come to know you as, as early an age as possible. And Father, help us to continue, Lord, to have a ministry in the word and faithfully preach it. Lord, we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.
it's amazing what the Lord is doing here at Countryside, and I want you to know that to a man, our elders and deacons, we all understand that this is not any man's doing or group of men's doing. This is the Lord's doing, and honestly, it's, it's fun to watch what the Lord's doing through you, and uh, great to be a part of it. That's how we feel, and we're just grateful, and we continue to pray for the Lord's goodness and faithfulness. Well, I want to walk through just a few things with you. And um, look just at a couple of glimpses of where we are, and then I want to look ahead at the year before us. Dusty read from Ephesians 4.12, this is, this is what we're here to do. We exist as the leaders of the church for the equipping of the saints for the work of service, that is to equip you to do the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ as we all do what God has called us to do in this place. Just uh, a reminder of our leadership, we have 12 elders, and uh, I think you know most of them. We've, most of us have been around for a while, but this last year, we did see two elders appointed, Rich Dewey, who prayed a few minutes ago, and Dusty Burris. We're thankful for the men God continues to raise up to help lead this church. We also, and this wasn't planned, but we have 12 deacons, and, uh, and so we rejoice in their service. These men lead ministries in some way, not just serving, although they do that, but they lead in serving in this church. Just to give you a, a brief reminder, uh, obviously close to my heart is our worship in the Word, and this past year, in the morning, we continue to study through Romans, and I'm excited about beginning Romans 5 this next week, uh, one, of the, one of the richest texts, I think, in all of the Bible, and just a great encouragement. And of course, this past summer, we looked at those truths to which we must hold fast. In the evening, uh, we went through Ruth, which was a, a wonderful journey. Rocky went through Second Peter, which we all benefited from and enjoyed. Uh, Dusty, Jonathan, and Justin, as you saw in the video, covered the words and works of Jesus. And then uh, Rocky and I began the Anchored series, which uh, we will resume shortly in Sunday evening and look forward to uh, this, this spring. Just to give you an idea of uh, over the last year what our worship attendance has been, you can see, again, going back to 2004, 2005, that's continued to grow at a steady rate, which is a, a manageable rate, and we thank God for that. I think over the last few weeks, and maybe even through the better last part of the fall, we're averaging about 1350 or so in our morning worship, but uh, this is over that last year. Also, our, our church reaches out in a remarkable way through the streaming of our services. Um, the guys who take care of that provided these numbers. Over last year, there were 30,000 hours streamed from our services here to 24 different countries. And those weren't like just random hits where maybe one country for a, they just checked us out. There are people actually who listen and, um, and receive some some uh, edification from the ministry of this church on a regular basis. These are our Sunday morning adult ministries. The average attendance for 2015-2016, you can see the, um, the first service in the worship service is the lightest at about 340 on average. The second service averaging about 400, and then the third service averaging close to 500. You can also see the, the Sunday school numbers there. The average adult Sunday school is uh, attendance on a, on a given morning is 464. Here's our maximum attendance. This would, this would have been one of those big Sundays, Easter or, or one of the conferences, just to give you an idea that we often do hit, um, we hit the maximum capacities that, that we can handle here and in our other uh, facilities. Just a couple of ministries to note in nursery. And, and for those of us who don't do this on a regular basis, these are frightening numbers. Um, 177 children and 180 workers to care for them on a rotating basis, obviously, and uh, 38 births in, 2013, in 2016. In terms of the, the children and volunteers, age three plus, the average attendance you can see in Sunday schools, about 300 children. In Awana, about 300 children, and then in the choirs, about 117, and you can see the workers there that, that are required to uh, care for our children. We're so grateful for them. What an amazing ministry uh, the Lord has given this church in our children's ministries. In terms of students, this gives you a glimpse of that. Our middle school averages about 62, our, our high school about 68, 
and our college ministry, about 40. The various life stage ministries, our 128 young adults averages about 50 packing out the homes where they usually go. Our beginnings and foundations groups are reflected there too with 31 and 65. And then our, our older singles and finally the Heritage Fellowship you saw in the video. About 75 of them are a regular part of that ministry. Our partners program, which is something the elders started several years ago, we felt it was important to provide a good curriculum for one-on-one -on -one discipleship. As you saw in the video, 360 people are now involved in that program, and we're so grateful. It's such a, a solid program created by Mike Fabares, and, um, and we thank the Lord for that. Terry Tyler provides leadership, and you can sign up online to be a part of that. In terms of our home fellowships, I won't go through all the curriculum and all of that. I just want you to, to get a glimpse of the fact that there are 16 home fellowship groups in 11 different communities, two languages, the average a couple hundred people, and about 400 people are enrolled, so not everybody's able to come every time they meet, but a, a really good participation in that ministry. A new ministry this year um, in 16 is Mothers of Prodigals Praying and uh, mothers who want to pray for their adult kids who are not walking with the Lord. And uh, if you want to participate in that, the information's here. You can become a part of that. Just some general uh, things you heard on the video about the Master's Seminary, an MDiv four-year program. They're, the classes, uh, many of them are two-way live where the, the students here can ask questions of the professors there in L.A. And, and get their answers back. Some of them are online, and some of them we teach here on site. Like uh, just this last week, I was teaching a discipleship class of, uh, for some of the guys. So the, that's kind of how it works out. You saw in the video the rooms where they do that. Our first cohort is well on its way to uh, its uh, second semester of its first year, five students. And uh, we are already seeing wonderful interest in the new cohort that we're looking at beginning this coming fall. So we're excited about seeing that grow. Just some technical improvements around the campus. Uh, you can see that the less and the guys continue to work on refining the sound in this room um, and, uh, and a number of other things here in the main auditorium. Also, it never ceases trying to improve the infrastructure to increase the sound quality and all of those things. It's, you know, it's, it's a process to update the system. We've all benefited, even on Christmas, from the, the permanently mounted speakers down in the gym and from that secondary lighting that isn't the, the sort of glary uh, fluorescent lighting. Les uh, took care of all of that over this last year. And uh, with the new worship center, of course, there's a lot going on to make sure that we're where we need to be. Just generally some facilities things. Those of you, you who work in the, in the fellowship hall have noticed the new commercial range and oven that was installed. We painted, you know, the children's building has been fabulous, but it gets used. And so we painted it this last year, uh, replaced many of the chairs around campus, installed, uh, of course, the new parking lot that we'll all, we all are benefiting from, uh, had to repair and resurface the existing asphalt parking lot here, professionally clean the carpet and a number of the buildings we added a four-wheel all-purpose vehicle, not for, like, carrying their, the deer that they shoot or anything like that, <laughs> but for the facilities and landscape uh, staff to make sure they can get the stuff around that they need to and uh, repainted all the hand railings on campus. Just continually trying in God's goodness to st stay up with what needs to be done. That's just a little glimpse in the past year. Looking ahead as we anticipate... Uh, 2017, there are a few things I want to share with you. Again, obviously for me, worship in the Word. We'll continue our study in Romans. I'm still thinking about, I think I'm going to do a special summer series, and I've got a couple of ideas that are sort of percolating, and so uh, I'll keep you posted on that. And of course, uh, we anticipate Dusty, Jonathan, and Justin doing their PM summer ser special series, and uh, Rocky and I will continue to work through Anchored, and I'm excited about all we're going to be covering in the weeks and months ahead in Anchored. The Essentials Conference is right upon us. This is the final Essentials Conference. In, on February, in February 10 to 12 of this year, we'll deal with the issue of worship. And we're so excited to have with us for this conference Alistair Begg, John MacArthur, and Bruce Ware. It'll be a, really an amazing conference. I hear that it is filling up, maybe almost full, so don't delay to sign up to be with us. Also, obviously, we're not going to be in the new building for Easter and Good Friday, so just to give you a heads up of what we've decided on that front, 
the Good Friday services will be here in this current worship center, three of them, at 4.30, 5.45, and 7 o'clock. And our Easter Sunday services, we're going to move as we did the Christmas services to the gym, but we'll still require three of them. You remember last year we did four one-hour services here, and, um, and we feel like we can do it in three in the gym, but we'll need the three to do that. So they'll be at the regular times on Easter Sunday morning in the gym. Also, coming up after that in May, from May 19 to 30, uh, celebrating the 500th anniversary this year of the Reformation. It was on October 31st, 1517, that a, a monk named Martin Luther, perhaps at that point in time, not even yet a believer, just, just dealing with the issues of, of the sale of indulgences, nailed his 95 theses to the church door there in Wittenberg. And uh, so we want to go over there and see what um, just kind of retrace the history in Germany and Switzerland and look at the lives and ministries of Luther, Calvin, and Zwingli. There's still just a few spots left. It's filling up, but there are just a few left. If you're interested, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, you can see me afterwards, and I'll give you more information. Also, um, you heard about the Worship Center Project. And um, just to remind you of the big picture uh, this is the elders' plan to accommodate our long-term growth, if the Lord should continue to do that. We don't take that for granted, but we do look and, and try to look wisely at the past and project based on that to, into the future. And so the Worship Center Project is part of a larger plan to accommodate the long-term growth in this church and maximize the ministry of the gospel through this church. And so the plan is this, build a new worship center to accommodate about 1,100 people, which is a, a little bit, uh, we've, I think it's 1127 or something, the seating in the new worship center. And then to maintain a strong home church with up to 2,000 members, which is the equivalent of two services, basically. And then beyond that, our goal and plan, again, the Lord, man makes his plans, the Lord directs his steps, but our desire then would be to plant like-minded churches across the Metroplex. And we have already been in extensive discussion about that and looking into the future as to what the Lord might do in that. We have a, a plan, a uh, timeline laid out, and, and looking at people and so forth. So that is, uh, that is happening as well. But just to know, just so you know how this building fits into the larger context of what the elders would like to see done. In terms of the building itself, some highlights from this past year. Uh, the, prep, the site was prepped in the winter. They drilled and poured the piers, and they drilled and poured the piers. And they drilled and poured the piers, 106 of them, many of them going down 60 feet underground. This will be the most solid building in North Texas. Um, but it's, it was important because of the ground there, and so we're grateful for that. The foundation and structure done this summer and this fall and winter. They're working on framing, exterior sheathing, as you can see, and, and paving that parking lot. As we look ahead for 2017... January through March, their plan is to finish the exterior and the interior. And the goal is in, in April that we will receive a certificate of occupancy that will allow us then to take possession of the building. And we need then a couple of weeks. We were talking about on our staff retreat. We need a couple of weeks to turn around all that needs to be done to get everything from this building into that building to make sure everything's working as it should be and so forth, and we're aiming for early May for a building dedication. Just to give you uh, financial context, Dwight already covered some of this, but in 2016, 1.3 million, almost 1.4 million was given toward the building. The total given through uh, 1231 of this last year toward the building project has been $5 million. And just a reminder, we have another special offering coming up on Palm Sunday, April 9th. Our hope is to, to finish getting what we need to do all that needs to be done yet with the building. What is that? Well, uh, the parking lot, you remember the related projects to the worship center we've shared with you. Parking lot cost came in at $585. We've received $540 of that, so we still have to finish that. And then uh, some renovations in this facility to make it long-term use. And, and sort of on the back burner, we'd love to do it, but it's not a project on, on the immediate forefront of our minds is getting rid of some of those uh, eyesores down there, those power poles as you enter our property. 
What is the transition to the new worship center going to look like? Well, the, as I mentioned, the tentative date, and it is tentative, of course, everything can happen, anything can happen in building construction, but we're looking at a building dedication in early May. The new service times, a lot of people wonder about that. What is it going to look like on a Sunday morning? The services will be lengthened just a few minutes to an hour and a half to give a little more time, not to me, don't worry, uh, <laughs> but to the other things that need to be done and not to crush, crunch things so much with music and all the other things that need to happen. And so, the, the two, and then give 30 minutes between the services so there's plenty of time for people to, to interact with each other, enjoy some fellowship, and get to wherever it is they're going, where they don't have to do the sprint, you know, amen, sprint to the next event. Um, the two service times will be at 8.45 to 10.15 and 10.45 to 12.15. So 8.45 and 10.45 will be the two service times. We hope along with that building dedication to see the, the new bookstore and library that are going to, we're, it's going to be moved from this building, obviously, because it'll be out of the flow of traffic. They'll be moved down to the, the south building that faces out into the courtyard area, and we want to give it uh, high visibility there. So we hope that those will uh, take place with the, the new building dedication in early May. What are we going to do to this building? Uh, that, that's included in that $150,000. As you heard, there's some, there's some things like offices and so forth, but that's not included in that $150,000. In the $150,000, these three things are included. Relocate the existing library and bookstore to the South Building. We hope that that will take place in April. And again, the rooms that face out into the courtyard with good signage, and, and we hope to draw people in. That sidewalk will become a, a very important sidewalk that goes by there once the new worship center is completed. And then we want to convert this room to multi-use, not, don't think gym, no, no active, active games, that kind of thing, but multi-use adult space, and we'll have to wait, obviously, till after we're in the new building to do that. We'll take out the pews, we'll make it so that we can have tables in here for Sunday schools, adult Sunday schools, and if we need to set up chairs and have for funerals or weddings, we can do that as well. And, of course, those uh, we'll, we'll have to purchase tables and chairs for this room. Other than that, by the way, there won't be a lot that will be changed to this room. We want to keep it where it can be used for all those kinds of events. Again, why all of this? What's the point? The church exists ultimately to worship the Lord, but the way that functions, the way the church brings glory to God is when everybody does his or her role, fulfills their role in the life of the body. Our job is to equip you to do the work of service. You then do the work of service. We all do what God's called us to do, and the body of Christ is built up. And all of these things are really just part of accomplishing that. So we thank God for his goodness and for his faithfulness. We are ending um, a sort of another, another year in the life of our church. The annual meeting marks for us, the end of a year and the beginning of another one. And I just want again to say thank you to all of these men. Uh, you've seen some of them tonight. All of our elders uh, were not a part of the service tonight. And we kind of rotate through uh, each year. But uh, I so much appreciate all 11 men that serve with me as elders and, of course, our deacons. I'm grateful for their ministry. But I want to say a special word of thank you tonight to Dwight Custis, who has served as the chairman of the elder board this last year. That is, uh, there's a lot of time that's involved in that, a lot of investment, a lot of prayer, and um, I'm so grateful, we all are, for Dwight, for his friendship, for his leadership, and we just, uh, we're so appreciative, Dwight, for you. Would you come up? I just want to give you a little gift. Let's thank him together. You can open it later. By the way, in case you're wondering, I'm going to spoil it. I'm sorry, Dwight, but I'll tell you what, uh, what he's getting. And, and you, you have to be you know, somebody like a Dwight Custis to really appreciate this gift. It is a leather-bound harmony of the Gospels. And so uh, I think uh, Standard, Thomas and, and Gundry's harmony of the Gospels, leather-bound. So it'll, it'll last. And so I know you'll use it and enjoy it. Appreciate you so much. 
Well, again, with the beginning of a new year sort of for our church, marked by the annual meeting, it's a joy for, for me to introduce to you and have come close our service our new chairman for the new year, our brother Daryl Bennett. Daryl. Well, amen. Amen. And uh, let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we want to give you thanks for all that you've done, not only in this past year, but the years past. And we stand in grateful awe of what you have done. Lord, you, as a church, you've kept us safe physically. You provided for financial needs and you have provided spiritual growth. We give you thanks for all these things. And we continue to ask, ask that you would meet these needs in the coming year. We pray for spiritual growth in each member of this church. Pray that we would walk with you in humble dependence upon you. And pray that you would enable us by your spirit. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, each member would serve you in the capacity and with the gifting with which you have enabled us. We pray these things for your honor and your glory and in the name of your Son, our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.